Evening everyone, it's Glenn from Mud Flood Revisionist History Australia, whatever it's going to be called. Um, sorry it's been a while between videos. Uh, there's obviously lots of videos out there to look at anyway. And I've been having, I've been researching history from around the world and languages and it's been quite consuming. So I'm doing a much broader sort of research, uh, but I wanted to come back to Sydney. So this this is a picture of apparently of Picton in the early 19th century. There's cows in in the Picton Camden area, and the story of these cows is um, let's have a look. The story of these cows is that uh, you've got two bulls and five cows out from the first fleet, wandering around, were lost. Uh, the wild cattle were found thriving south of the Nepean River. That came known as cow pastures, and then so on and so on. I was out with the um, people. I went out some time ago to the Picton Historical Society. I had a chat to them, to them about that, and they said, yes, um, they told me a bit about it. It didn't occur to them that perhaps the story was made up. Um, we should go a bit more. Is it how could such a few cows make it out there and... There'd be cow pastures in an open area, and they'd be thriving, and how would they even make it with all the indigenous people all through the Cumberland Plain, obviously interested in the hunt. Well, let's say so how I wanted to do this is that I wanted to come back to this because this is this is the story and nothing else makes sense. So what I wanted to do is start off with a few of the maps. Now, I don't have offhand what each year of each one is around about the 1790s. Here's one which I'll see if I can blow up. Um, this this is just one of the survey maps, probably 1792 or three or something like that. And this this one, if you go into it in detail, this is quite inconsistent with the others. Basically, if you look, this is a description of the terrain. So this is a geographical discussion of of things. You have Prospect Mount up there for some reason near Hawkesbury. You have Prospect Hill, and Prospect keeps coming up, it's now a reservoir. So that's particularly interesting how Prospect Hills are always a reference on all these maps. We got, um, that's an S, an old fashioned S. So, so here they're still using the old uh, lettering. Um, so that's that's not an F, it's an S, so that's Rose Hill. Uh, every comment is bad country, it's all very bad, it's all it's hopeless, it's terrible, nothing's good. It, it, everything's negative, so I don't know. <laughs> that must have, this must have been going back to the old country, and so they were obviously maybe um, trying to discourage people because it was probably so amazing, or maybe maybe they just didn't want to. You know, I, I don't know. I, I don't see what the problem was. Okay, so some interesting things back around the Picton area. You see, in floods, the water rises to the height, um, what fifty feet perpendicular, leaving reeds um, in the trees. Well, that's amazing, isn't it? I mean, wow. About 200 acres of land for cultivation. Um, there's there's Moray, Moray. Um, there is a place called Moray around that area. Pyramid Hill, I don't know where that is. Um, I can't find it now. Um, country here, the same as above. Well, here we go. All this country, this is Mount um, uh, Twi Twifts or Mount Twiz or what? whatever it is, um, Round Hill, Saddle Hill. Apparently they can see all out to the west from here somehow. And all this country as far as, as the eye can see from the hills is, is you know, barren and crap and all that. So it's all a whole bunch of um, garbage. Um, deep coarse sand. Oh, so whoever, okay, so this this is bizarre, right? Because you don't get this. if They're obviously trying to discourage people. And they obviously have done a lot of surveying. So let's go to another one. Um, okay, this one is Grimes, it's in the, it's about the 18, I don't know, 1807 to 1815, um, let's blow this one up. This one is an official map, it uh, has, um, it has, these are all online, it has Port Hacking, it has Botany Bay, and it has all those numbers, all the depths. Uh, so that's their, that's their chains that they put down from the ship to do survey the base. 
Um, you you have Sydney Farm Cove as always. You have now what you do have already is allotments. Um, so is this an authentic map? There has to be now. It's either, it's either going to be a survey of the existing people that are here, but looking at the the allocations, this will be new allotments. So I would say that that if the the previous peoples that were here, whether they had townships or not, they they're not shown on this map. They're, this this is either a reclaimed and rebranded. Or what have you so it, you can take you either they've surveyed another culture or they've reallocated all the allotments I think in this case whichever way this is these are actual allotments but um you've got Tungabi spelt that way so not it's got an IE these days uh, you have um, other interesting things broken by it's all pretty normal Okay, so you've got the Hawkesbury Settlement, it's called. Uh, Richmond Hill keeps its prominent. Um, and then we start going into River Gross, discovered by somebody or other, Lieutenant Grimes, whoever it is. Uh, okay, course of the Nepean. Okay, so that's of the Nepean River. All right, so let's go to another one. Oh, sorry, back, back at this one, sorry. Um, it has all the names of the allotments. You can check through the names of these people to see if you think they're legitimate. If you think that they obviously, since they're registered, they are, they intend to sell them to them and possibly claim taxes from them. And this is the start of how they work in terms of getting into um, tax farms. Okay, so this, this one is a similar thing, but it's more higher level. You don't, you have basically... It's uh, more of a descriptive map. It, I, I can't find, it's the same, basically the same thing. You see these things out to this area again. So this area, um, it's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful country now. Swampy, okay. So, you know, they, they changed the story here. Good good country hills are very, are very gentle around. Um, five um, something, Prospect Hills allotments. I mean, it's quite funny because when I grew up around in, in Tungab, near Tungab, I grew up around here. Um, yeah, it was just the back end of Sydney. And it wasn't, places weren't worth much. I mean, Blacktown was the cheapie, was over here. So you've got the first allotments for here. And I guess there's a, there's a, there's a reason for it to do with water. And they needed to separate peoples for some reason, or, or I'm not sure. Um, Parramatta is here. And this is your Rose Hill and all that sort of stuff. Uh, Northern Boundary and pond so there you go hunters hill sydney the stuff going on woolamaloo okay so um, cape banks okay great obelisk this keeps coming up there is an obelisk here on the maps generally this would have been a pre-existing obelisk this would have been a uh, a marker so that mariners could know could n note the marker and where they were and that was their reference point. Um, so that's for that's that's for not if it's on land, it's it's uh, up on a hill. These sort of stones are they're just reference points for surveying. But in this case, it's for the mariners. So it's, it's not not a lookout, not a lighthouse, but it's a it's a reference. And that could have been two thousand years old. It could have been anything. So we don't know. Uh, oops, wrong one. Um, okay, so. Uh, this one, okay. I've got. I've looked at several maps of Sydney. That's a lay, That's a French one. It's pretty lame. That's a, oh, okay, here we go. Um, Sydney itself. Um, this is apparently a map. Uh, you know, back at the beginning, um, it's got. It's just non-stop trees. It's farm cove. I mean, what is this? I mean, is this? Is this? What is it? What is this? It just looks like trees and rows on it. So what's all that? Um, Farm Cove, Sydney Cove. I mean, that's this is um, that's the botanical gardens sort of area as it is today. Oh, here we go. Yep, so that, that's uh, that's where Sydney Town is. Okay. Um, this is the one that's really bizarre. 
I've gone, it's similar to the other maps by Grimes about the 1800s. What is disturbing about this one is that I can't get a close up. I can't get a high resolution. This is what's called the same map, the Grimes map I showed you before with all the names of the people. But this one is, it has it's apparently got French annotation or something. And this is, and, and I can't get the high resolution. So what I do get though, is apparently this is annota it says it's 1799 and one reference or 1807 on another. I, I can't read the, I can't read the date on it. I don't know if there is one. It'd be there. I can't read it. Um, uh, now this one's apparently supposed to be modeled or an annotated version of the other map I showed you, which was just a refresh your memory. Um, that one. Okay. It's and, it's, and this, and this one though has, uh, has a lot more names on it. So either they've expanded in, in, in five minutes flat or this, this, this was actually what was there. Um, which I think it was. So I think that what you're dealing with here is what it was around the year 1800. So perhaps depending on what you've researched, there could have been Dutch there a long time ago or Portuguese, but things would have collapsed, um, uh, simplified and but still there would be people there and so what you get now is that you get a bit you get the you get all the place names so you have um banks town is there banks town is there you have um and now this is botany bay this is banks peninsula originally banks peninsula sorry you have peter sherm there you have Parramatta. you have cabramatta okay um, Cabramatta, as I might have said in previous posts, seems to be goat kill, goat abattoir. So it seems like there's a there's a sort of a pigeon Portuguese that's that's come out where it's like cabra matter, goat kill. Like it's just a simplified, almost a a, a regressed form of of um, a, a, you could call it Portuguese. But then what what's what is that based on? It's probably a sort of a Gaelic. You've got Eds, A I R D S. You have and I can barely read this. Um, I can't close it up. Uh, Upper Nepean Castle Castle Ray. It looks like that's Castle Ray, but that's not Castle Ray as we know. It. That's Castle Ray, like up near, uh, not Windsor, but the uh, but, um, what's it called? You know, where you where you, where you cross the river and stuff like that. You have um, Curry Jang, which is Curry Jong today but curry jang what's curry jang what does that mean i mean curry is like kill or curry is like eat a, eat a curry or what does it mean um so that's interesting and you've got names you don't you just don't know what you can't read them uh and i can't find a date now this is this so either way in all these maps you see references regardless you see references to the um the fact there's cow pastures out here somewhere there's always cow pastures out here and there's roads and stuff and they're always there now according to the original story as i showed you before um yeah 1788 1795 but look there were always cows out there so there was always some kind of um leftover culture that was just going along in a sleepy hollow kind of way that uh, accessed, I, I would say, either Sydney, um, Sydney Cove or probably went along the Nepean. And, and if we just, just one more thing, and this is what I want to, you, to put you out this as a hypothesis, which is, goes back to the, one of the first maps I showed you, where all this, whoever surveyed this, I'm, I'm assuming we could find out who that was, um, uh, act from actual survey laid down by actual survey you know part of me thinks is that regardless of when was the true date of settlement um, when you look at Bathurst and you go into the like the whole thing where well here's Broken Bay so and then that leads into Hawkesbury River 
Um, I think that from all the wars and all the people trying to get away from all the constant invasion, uh, which is what we're feeling today with all the stuff going on, but the constant invasion, I'd imagine that they would have found a way to hide their, their, their life. They would have probably gone down here in Broken Bay, Gosford, and probably gone across to Richmond, and then there would have been a some kind of road or some network to have gone inland. And you'll see, if you if in the previous discussions by any of the other people, that Bathurst seems to connect well with um, parks and, and various, and, and going further west, Cowra, and eventually you get out to Adelaide or you get out to um, uh, Ports, uh, Portsland, I can't remember. But, but you basically go all the way out. You, have, you could potentially have a full inland um, colonial that is protected by invasion in a way by being almost secret. Uh, it's like passing through the Blue Mountains would have been very difficult and people would have been forewarned. Uh, and would have been protected. And maybe that, and look, that might have been a partial short-term method because you have the frontier wars out there as early, as late as 1820 and 1815 and things like that. Uh, be probably because they had figured out, they'd hunted down people trying to have a, a life free of tyranny. And still it came back, came, it came to them eventually. This seems to be the thing. A war that never ends, and you can see how this, the way this map is described, the the you know, even referencing that there's pastures. Don't say cows here, but um, on another map, I think they do. Um, I think I think that this was this map was designed to keep people away, and there is some kind of these pyramid hills keep uh, pop up. Anyway, that's it for now. Um, yeah, that's it.